Well guys, it's Christmas Eve and back here in the shop working on the Duramax. Not because I have to, but because I want to get you guys some awesome content and because it's JRC54's fault. He's the one who conned me into having to replace my glow plugs because I said I would. And I did say that I would on the last video, so this is kind of a continuation of that video. We're going to be doing glow plugs today in the old Duramax, and we're going to be replacing the fuel filter, get you guys a little bit of know-how and how to do that. Stay tuned. Step one, have a lifted truck. If you don't have a lifted truck, then you're gonna have to take your front wheels off to get the inner fender liner out. Not so much fun, but you know what? I have a lifted truck, so I don't have to do that. So, get out the front inner fender liners. We got about 10 little clips that we have our little pry tool for, and we have about three 10 millimeter nuts inside the fender well too. Get it out. Then there's also going to be a couple of push pin uh, speed sensors that are have their wiring wired in here behind there. Make sure you pry those out too. There we are. Now that we have our inner fender drop, Magic Presto, we have access to all of our glow plugs in here. Pretty fancy, right? So at this point, some of you guys are definitely gonna wanna be spraying in some PB Blaster because not everybody's truck is like mine. It was a California truck that has under 100,000 miles. So we're gonna give these things a little preliminary spray down and then we're gonna be taking the wires off of these. There's an eight millimeter nut holding the wire to each one of these glow plugs. So eight millimeter to take those nuts off. There we go. Literally just cracked them all loose. And like I said, I'm lucky enough in my situation on these to where they are so crust free that I can just spin these nuts off by hand right now. And then the glow plug wire hangs out right there. So next to get the physical glow plugs out, you are gonna need a 12 millimeter socket. A little extension will help you to break the glow plugs loose. Rip light. I got this, guys. I promise. I'm a professional. There we are. We got them all. Just kind of broke free now and spin them all out by hand. 
And like I said, I'm not replacing these because any of them are broke, but because I like to do things before they happen to go bad on me and with this thing hitting 100,000 miles, it probably never been replaced and it's a good time to right now. So here's our glow plug. Got a little bit of white hot tip residue on it. So they don't look horrible, but we're gonna get all these out and we're gonna get our new ones here in just a second. So now I've got a really quick test here for you guys. I got a couple of glow plugs, uh, one of which I know that is bad. So we're going to take a standard jump box. We're gonna put our ground cable just on the case outside of the glow plug and then our positive is going to touch right here in the end. You can see your glow plug tip heat up nice and glowing hot that glow plug is a good glow plug then this one test this one going up or up nada no hito uppo so it don't work jump glow, glow plug that's how you guys can test them pretty easily just gotta get them out now the new ones that we've got going in today are our AC Delcos. The part number on that one is going to be, get a little focus here, ACD, they're just 9Gs, AC Delcos. And then there's the GM part number as well. These things out of the case. There is our standard glow plug. Now what we're also going to be doing is we're going to make sure to add a little bit of anti-seize to the threads here before we get them put in. That is going to keep them from having any seizure issues if they ever need changed out ever again. So we're going to dab a little bit on there, get them put back in the block. There we are. Now that we've got them all put in there by hand, we need to torque them down. Torque spec on these is going to be 13 foot pounds. Don't over torque them guys. There we are, all torqued down to 13 foot-pounds, thanks to our nice snap-on 3 8 drive tech angle wrench. This thing is a great buy. If you guys don't have one, I'd recommend getting one, especially for doing all these little jobs that require exact torque. You need to torque things down right. Next, while we're in here, we're going to be removing our fuel filter and changing that out. So, we got a big pair of channel locks, disconnected our whiff sensor, water and fuel sensor. And I like to take that one out while this is still in the vehicle, just because, you know, it comes out easier when someone's holding the filter for me. And I don't have to put the filter in a bike, bike, <laughs> a bike bench, a vice bench on the vice to uh, hold it to get it out later. And you're gonna make a little mess. Yep, just like that. Now for our filter removal, just got a regular large oil filter wrench. Give her about two turns. Should be loose enough to come out. 
Just like oil filters, guys, these things don't have to come out super, be put on super tight to seal everything. They should seal nicely on their own. So, there's our fuel filter. I'm gonna put our new one, same AC Delco back up on there. And like I said, for reinstallation, we do have an AC Delco Co. part number TP3018. New part, same part. Also comes with two O-rings, the large ones for the top of your fuel filter, and the smaller one there is to replace your uh, O-ring on the whiff sensor. Tight. There we go. Now reconnect our whiff sensor. Look at that. Guys, we are all done with this side. Now we're gonna go over to the other side. So on this side, everything's not quite so wide open. Now don't let it, you know, guys, get you down. These wiring harnesses, they just kind of lift out of the way. And then you can see mostly what we're doing here. We've got one glow plug there, one glow plug is going to be there in the back, then there's a third one there behind the steering column, and then the fourth one is going to be right over here behind the intercooler pipe. That one you should be able to get to with a couple of swivels and or a wrench. The one behind the steering shaft there that one's a different story. That one, you're gonna need to take the intermediate shaft of the steering shaft loose, which is that bolt right there. That one right there, uh-huh. You're gonna have to take that one off, and then you're gonna slide your steering shaft down to get access to that number two glow plug right there. Really, not that bad. Just one extra thing you gotta take off, guys. Not that bad at all. Now before all you hot rods get to putting those inner fenders back in, you gotta remember you gotta bleed this brake system. We still wanna check for fluid leaks in the fuel system. So here at our top little fuel area, there is a bleeder valve, flathead screwdriver. We're going to break that loose. Break that loose. And for you know guys like me that don't have a lift pump, now we get to push the button. This is going to pull a vacuum up in the top of the system and pull some of the fuel into that fuel filter and fill it up. So now that we've got fuel coming out of our bleeder there pretty nicely, we have bled all of our fuel and now we need to tighten back up the little set screw. Tighten that back up and now we're going to start it and check to see if we have any leaks. Did I tell you what or did I tell you what? 
that really wasn't that hard of an installation. Now I know you guys with rust are gonna have a little bit more in the way of issues, but just think ahead guys. Take some penetrant oil, be spraying these things down ahead of the time, you know, a couple days in advance so you get some heat cycles going through, get that penetrant oil working to break those things loose so you don't have broken off glow plugs in your heads. That's never fun for anybody. Well, that's about all I have for you guys today. If you like the gear that I'm wearing right now, this comes from All Stance Mafia and a group called Seven. They're over on Instagram. I will be sure to put a link to them down in the description below. They've got some pretty cool gear and they feature some really cool trucks, like my Duramax over there. They got some pretty cool stuff. Go and check them out. I really appreciate what everybody has been doing for me on the channel. We are on our way to 9,000 subscribers, then shortly coming to a quick 10,000 subscribers. We're going to do some awesome giveaways and even more awesome videos. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on the bell notification so you get notified when I come out with some cool, awesome content for you guys to enjoy. I really appreciate it. Make sure you guys have a very Merry Christmas and you guys stay awesome.